What's going on guys? Jake Foley with Barbin.com. Today we're going to be talking about HRV, which stands for Heart Rate Variability. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about how WHOOP is helping athletes everywhere assess their performance and recovery on a day-to-day -day basis. So, before we dive into the content of this video, I want to give a big shout out to Whoop for financially supporting this content and also sending us this Whoop strap that I've tried for the last few weeks to assess my performance and readiness. In this video, we're going to cover a lot of topics. I have an interview with Elite Performance Manager Mike Lombardi over at Whoop, and he helped me truly understand how the algorithm that goes into this strap is helping athletes everywhere understand their readiness and recovery on a day-to-day -day basis and how they should adjust their training accordingly. The science that goes into it is pretty freaking cool. But before we dive into all the science and all the goodness of the content, it's a good idea to first understand what the heck HRV is. Heart rate variability, in short, is exactly what the name suggests. It's a slight variability in between our heart rate or heartbeats for that matter. No two beats are timed exactly the same, and this variability has become to suggest overall well-being, fitness, and health. So how exactly does HRV tie into health? Well, a lot of it comes down to the nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is broken into two branches. We have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. These two nervous systems are always at play with one another. I like to think of HRV as like dueling dragons, right? So these are always interacting with one another, and HRV is a predictor for understanding the balance and imbalance we may have in between these two nervous systems. Systems. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for all of our fight or flight responses. So anything that's a stressor, whether it be physical, physiological, or psychological, the sympathetic nervous system will generally be at play. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for like our read and digest kind of responses. So when we're laying down in bed, recovering and resting, the parasympathetic nervous system will be a little bit more active. So HRV is used to suggest balances and imbalances between these two nervous systems. Generally speaking, a higher HRV number will mean that these nervous systems are highly responsive. So if we have a very big sympathetic nervous system response, the parasympathetic nervous system will also balance it out and it'll result in a highly responsive nervous system, which is a good thing. If there is a lower HRV number, then that could mean that the imbalance is going in one direction. So for a quick example, if you're always stressed and always taking stimulants and just never really giving yourself a rest, then your sympathetic nervous system will be very active, but your parasympathetic nervous system will not be equaling all of that reactive state that you're always in, thus suggesting that you might have a lower HRV number, which could correlate to overall well-being and health. So a high HRV number is good and a low HRV number is bad, right? Pump the brakes, it's not that simple. And this is where things get really interesting. Similar to training and just overall recovery on a day-to-day -day basis, HRV requires context into one's individual state and life. So things like genetics, environment, and much more can play into one's HRV number. I'm gonna kick it to Mike Lombardi to help explain a little bit more. If, if you were to just Google, hey, what's good HRV, it'd be broken down by age, gender, things like that. We look at it as it's largely genetic, um, it's a lot easier to be able to control uh, like a resting heart rate than it is your heart rate variability. So everyone can improve their fitness. And then I think where WHOOP is, is unique and can really help people is understanding their HRV, let's say it is lower, doesn't mean that they're not fit. We're just trying to see how ready you are, right? That's your body's daily readiness. So if you think about it as not sure HRV is a good indicator of overall health, we also want to look at your daily readiness and are you improving? Are you increasing your own HRV relative to your rolling baseline? Um, so that's what people should be thinking about is like everything. Okay, this is where I am now. How can I one measure it? And then what are the things I can do to improve it? Whether that's augmenting training, is it as simple as just getting better sleep, nutrition, hydration, there's a bunch of different things. And for each person, they have to kind of play with all the pieces to increase their HRV. So if they're increasing their HRV, their daily readiness is going to be better. The resting heart rate's most likely also going to go down. So what we tend to see is with an increase in HRV, we're also going to see a decrease in resting heart rate. That means that the body's adapting well to external stimulus and either you're just training within the right zones or again, maybe you're just a superhuman and you live in the green. The goal is improve your own HRV relative to yourself. A high HRV plus a low resting heart rate means that your, work, your body is incredibly efficient. So if you kind of look at the two together, I, I, I think you kind of have to. It, it's really just work economy, like your work, your work economy, how efficient are you, uh, and how can you improve the two things? So HRV is daily readiness. It's literally all the inputs, right? All the inputs, how do they affect you, and how are you managing them? And then resting heart rate's really just 
are you getting fitter? Are you getting better? <laughs> So your HRV score is an extremely complicated number. It's made up of things like your genes, environment, and so much more. But what are some ways you can improve your HRV right now on an acute and daily basis? We're gonna cover five ways right now. Number one is staying hydrated. Being dehydrated can wreak havoc on your HRV, and if you're active or you're an athlete, then you need to stay hydrated anyways for your performance. Number two is nutrition. So obtaining quality nutrients from whole foods will always fare better than getting more processed and sugar Latin foods, and that honestly will help your performance in the long run anyway. So just eating a balanced diet will always fare better for HRV. Number three is sleep. Sleep is huge for HRV and is probably one of the biggest indicators for low or high HRV scores. So sleep consistency comes into play, how much you're sleeping and the quality of your sleep can all impact your HRV number. Number four is being mindful of your stimulant consumption. So if you're always taking pre-workouts, coffees, and other forms of caffeine, then you should be equally mindful of how much you're letting your body relax. If you're constantly taking things like pre-workout and you're overdoing them, then you may not be leaving that sympathetic state, which could wreak havoc on your HRV score. Number five and the final way to improve your HRV score is to implement and use recovery modalities outside of just sleeping. So using things like the sauna, massage, meditation, these can all help support your parasympathetic nervous system and your overall rest, which can improve your HRV scores. The bottom line is that these five strategies to improving HRV are not incredibly complicated, but for many, they're the first and most overlooked. So when it comes to improving your HRV on just a daily basis, it's always a good idea to nail down your basics. Drink enough water, eat properly, sleep enough, use different recovery modalities, and be mindful of how often you're stimulating your body. So to help me better understand just how the whoop strap works, Mike and I built out a 20 minute AMRAP workout. This workout consisted of a 200 meter run, 10 deadlifts, 10 power cleans, 10 pushups, and 20 air squats. Now this is not the normal way I train. This had my heart rate going through the roof and I'm not used to doing such a time-based like intense workout. I train more like a power lifter. My accessories are a little bit more slow paced and my volume while high is never at an intensity that creates such a high heart rate spike. So that being said, the data from that workout and my conventional workouts were a lot different. And that's where the nuances come in into how to interpret the data and how to use it for your strengths based off of your activity and sport. And to help kind of understand that better, Better. Whoop uses a strain coach for every activity. So every kind of sport and activity you log with this band, you put in exactly what you're doing. And then it will rate your level of expenditure based on RPE, if you completed the workout, and how you rated your performance, and then takes all of that data and incorporates it into your daily strain. But to help you really understand what strain is and how Whoop uses it, I'm gonna give the floor to Mike. I think a really cool thing is the strain coach. The way we're looking at that is for every given recovery score you have, there's an optimal day strain that you can continue to get fitter without putting yourself in a bad position. Obviously, to, if we're really in a training block, we want to overreach a couple days. But if we're just talking about, hey, I just got on whoop. I want to improve a couple things. We want to stay in kind of that optimal training zone. So based on that recovery, you can look at what what a train says, hey, I'm gonna go for a run, I'm gonna do a CrossFit session. You can set what goal is, so you, there's a, the slider. So, and it'll do literally a live accumulation of your strain. Once you hit it, you get the check mark, and it's like, hey, that's good for the day. Another thing for people to understand is that strain isn't like a linear addition. So, if you've looked and you said, okay, that workout said it was an 11.5, and this workout says it was a 12.2, and my day strain for the day is 13. Right? It's, it's not a one plus one equals two here. The, the big things are understanding that recovery, how to manage the strain, and when to actually pull back. Right? It's important to pull back or manage your expectations. Just because something's on the schedule or on the calendar and you wake up and let's say you're in the red, you need to start thinking about how are you gonna potentially change the session, whether that's intensity or volume. It's probably gonna be one, if not both. It's not that you're gonna completely fail, but you're definitely more prone to injury, you're more prone to illness, and your capacity, especially over the course of time, uh, is just gonna be less. So whether that's power output, so if you're trying to do a heavy lift, if it's a power lifter, you're probably, you're not gonna get close to your one RM or you know whatever your percentages off are for that day, you're not gonna hit them. 
So now that we've covered how the strain coach can help you truly gauge your overall daily expenditure in terms of your activity and progressing in a smart and calculated way, another thing that ties into all this is your recovery. So basically on a daily basis, Whoop will ask you three things about your sleep, and that is if you wanna get by, perform, or peak. These three differences will adjust your sleep needs accordingly based on the recovery you've needed based on the workouts and strain from the day before and how you wanna perform the next day. Tying these all together is what gives Whoop, I think, that edge over other monitors that try to guesstimate how much recovery you need. They're giving you more of an accurate feedback based off of your physiology and what you are logging and help us really understand that deep sleep zone when we're recovering the most. I'm gonna let Mike take the floor and explain the science behind how Whoop understands our sleep and then records and presents it to us. So our sleep staging is very, very good. Um, so you actually know this is really how much REM sleep I'm getting. This is how much slowly sleep I'm getting. Um, and that combination of both how much sleep we tell you you need. So we, we the sleep performance, right? How much sleep do you need versus how much sleep you get? That's part of it. But it, part of what's probably you, you would be reflected in HRV and resting heart rate is the quality of the sleep that you're getting. So, right, you know, you can look at it, but that's not a quantified metric uh, necessarily. It's not like, uh, hey, I spent 60% of my night in slow wave sleep and REM sleep. If you did that, your numbers would probably be outstanding. Uh, what we try and tell people is if you can get those two, REM plus slow wave sleep, to be about 45 or 50% of your night's sleep, that's really solid in conjunction with, a, you know, at least 70% sleep performance. Uh, that's really good. So, the sleep performance is, is a really, that's probably the lowest, the base level of, hey, just, let's get you some more sleep. Then if you really dial into it and say, hey, I'm getting 100% sleep performance, why is my recovery not getting any better? And then you look in and you see you're getting 10 minutes of slow wave sleep, it means your body's literally not recovering in any way. So after using Whoop for a few weeks, I have three takeaways that I think are super useful for strength athletes. The first takeaway is Whoop allows you to kind of connect your mind and body. If you have a mindset of always trying to push all the time, or if you're on the mindset that like plays it cautious a lot and you want to under train almost when you should be kind of training more, I think Whoop does a really good job at kind of bridging where you should be sitting. So on days when you feel tired, but you have more, Whoop can tell you that you can have more strain and be okay versus when you're overreaching, when your mind is like, I want to keep pushing, I want to keep pushing. I think Whoop does a good job at kind of keeping you in check from just a mind and body standpoint. The second takeaway I took from Whoop is that it allows you to be objective on another level. So outside of just tracking RPE in your program, you can almost see how your RPE correlates with the numbers recorded versus what's recorded in the app. Almost every number that was recorded in the app in terms of my RPE versus the RPE I wrote down in my program was nearly similar. And that's really cool to see because that means that I'm being objective with my training and the Whoop device is kind of clarifying and confirming that I'm being objective enough to keep progressing in a smart way. My third takeaway is how useful some of these recovery numbers can be. So obviously every athlete knows they need to sleep more, but being able to break that down into three different sections of get by, perform, and peak, it helped me kind of understand even more how much sleep I need and how much I can get by with. So basically, I don't need to sleep nine hours a night every night if I just want to have a decent solid workout and recover to a pretty good extent. And that's what I like Whoop for. It helps me remain objective with my sleep, but also helps give me suggestions and ideas of when I need to sleep more based off of when I wanna push more. So it helps me be a little bit more firm on myself in terms of my own sleep hygiene and just my overall recovery practices. So all in all, I think those are my three biggest takeaways. It's helped me perform better in the gym and I really like the data that it's given me back in terms of tracking my progress. There's no denying that HRV plays an important role when it comes to performance readiness and recovery. And Whoop is trying to help you take that number along with multiple factors and tie it into the context of your own life and your own training. I like Whoop because they help you understand that everyone's gonna be slightly different and they base their device on your life that adapts and learns to you. If you wanna learn more about the Whoop device and how it can help you train better and learn more about HRV for that matter, be sure to check out our article and Google Barbend and Whoop.